before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. It's also true that the Process Church grew. Members began to create new, offset factions of the movement. Again, they splinter off, just like this is a splinter from Scientology, which is where Maury Terry's theory about the children came from, though the connection remains difficult to prove. The so-called Processians also denied any connection to the Manson family, despite the fact that many people believe Manson was influenced by the process, as Netflix's Sons of Sam, a descent into darkness portrays. He definitely was influenced by the process, and we'll be getting into that. Process Magazine editor Malachi McCormick explained how the Manson rumor got started. According to Art Forum, McCormick claimed that the Church of Scientology spread the rumor because, according to McCormick, quote, McLean and DeGrimston had stolen the tech, the E-meter, and were considered apostates by Hubbard. The rumors hurt the movement, which declined in popularity after the Manson murders. If what McCormick claims is true, in this way at least, the process never did managed to escape its Scientology roots. I don't think that that's quite accurate because Scientology would be taking one hell of a chance by trying to discredit him in that fashion. But here's an internal memo. You might find this interesting. Um, about, <laughs> let, me just, let me just say something real quick. They had to put out so many fires because of this process church because they were not only being linked to Manson, but as you see, David Berkowitz, and you'll understand why as we go, but they fair game Maury Terry, set up a whole fair game campaign against him. He's the one that wrote this book. Let me grab it. This book is called The Ultimate Evil, The Search for the Sons of Sam. And it's kind of a huge book. And it's a hell of a fascinating read. Hello, you guys. This is a rather impromptu video because my schedule this week has gotten a little lopsy daisy um, with all the exciting things going on off offline um because of some of the things going on online if, if that makes sense so i just kind of wanted to do a quick little touch base with you guys because again the whole purpose of my channel from from the get-go which was about four years ago of my channel was to have a place where nerds could unite and we could look at the greater world at large and look at some of these fascinating stories and folklore and true crime and history and, and kind of look at patterns together. So because you guys are my comrades, because you are my peers in this, um, I thought I needed to kind of keep you guys up to date with what is actually going on. As you notice, there was no Mystery Monday episode today because we've been a little bit sidetracked um, with the Son of Sam case. If you have missed the Son of Sam stuff, I will put that down in the description box below under show notes so you can catch up with this. Basically, when my friend, or I, for those who don't know, I had a friend who um, was doing shows with me from the channel Days But Not Confused, who sadly and kind of seriously passed away uh, his body was found on December 11th, 2023. And Doug and I were going to go through a lot of his research, his work, combined it with my own to look deeper at some of these um, famous cases where just looking at it, just glancing at it from afar, you wouldn't think these cases were connected. But when you really dig down the rabbit hole, you realize they're all connected. And so I have been in communication with a bunch of my friends on YouTube. Of course, you guys and Catherine Edwards has been involved. I went on Shanti's channel, Aquarius Rising Africa this morning and started the discussion about the Son of Sam. And I've also reached out to Steve and Tamara and other people to pick up 
help me pick up some of Doug's massive amount of research so that we can retell it and keep his research alive. Um, and so that his research would not have been done in vain. And I kind of laugh because I, like a lot of you guys, I'm a pretty woo-woo girl. <laughs> I do believe in the supernatural and I do believe in the paranormal. And I absolutely do believe that Doug is pulling a lot of strings on the other side of the veil. And I do believe that he is protecting this work from the other side of the veil. Um, because now I have been in contact with some people that um, know a lot more about this case and it's opened up a lot more doors and avenues to this case. Um, one of the guys is hopefully going to be on my channel this week. We've already scheduled a date to get him on my channel to talk about his research into this case. And then, of course, we've got a whole other other slew of stuff to go into, including Charles Manson, which I just got the book. Helter Skelter. It's a very thick book. So, um, you know, I'm going to try my best to get through it pretty thoroughly and quickly to be able to get all the information to you guys, as well as the process church of the final judgment, which, um, which I have again, doled out some of this, these topics to other people. So we can all kind of merge our work together to spread D Doug's work forward. Um, as I've said many times before, you know, um, as far as Son of Sam, the Son of Sam is crisis, I'll say, because we are on YouTube, so I'm going to be careful about how I, I choose my words here. Um, that happened in 1976 in New York City. I was born in 1983. So for most of my life, I have been aware of Son of Sam, but I thought he was just some, like, crazy dude who thought a possessed dog, demon dog, was, like, telling him to, you know, unalive people. And I never really gave it a second thought until I stumbled upon Doug Kramer's series, Raised in a Secret Society, where in season two, he goes in not only into Son of Sam, but Charles Manson, the three-letter agencies, um, L. Ron Hubbard from Scientology, Jack Parsons, Aleister Crowley, and of course, um, the Process Church of the Final Judgment. And he connected a lot of these dots. Now, if you guys knew Doug, you knew that uh, when he left Scientology in 2008, when he had his moment of an identity crisis of like, holy crap, what, what have I gotten myself involved in? After he recovered from that, he went on the mission as any really good, self-aware and intelligent person would do to try to figure out why he got so duped. Like, how did this happen? And of course, this started with hypnosis. And then he uncovered, he went way down the rabbit hole of all sorts of different conspiracies and stuff that we are all very well aware of, which is how he uncovered Maury Terry's work into the Son of Sam case. And so right now, that's kind of the main focus is getting this all organized because information is coming like crazy. And so I feel like it's really important. Again, I was born in 1983. I knew about the Son of Sam crisis, but not to sound rude or anything, um, I have a lot of empathy for the people who go through these horrific crimes, but I, I wasn't alive during this time, and I don't know any of the victims. I don't I, I don't have, at that, at that point, I did not have family in New York. I have family in New York now, so it's no skin off my back. Whether David Berkowitz was the lone person or whether this was a group of people, it's no skin off my back, right? It doesn't affect me in my personal life as far as the actual crimes. What does affect me in my personal life and what affects you in your personal life is the systematic ABUSC happening and the mind control happening to create these Manchurian candidates. And so that is the big focus is like looking at these patterns, seeing the cover ups and then trying to talk about them. And I don't you know, I was on the phone um, earlier today offline speaking to um, my new friend who's going to be coming on the show this week, who knows a lot about this case. And, you know, to paraphrase, like, I, I don't, as he said, I don't know if we're ever going to totally get to the truth. And that's okay. As long as we know that what we've been given, the official narrative, isn't the truth. You know, we know they, they feed off of chaos. We know the group of controllers want chaos. They want to feed off of our stress and our anxieties. So as long as we're aware of that, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And this is not just an American problem. This is a world problem. And so I thank you guys for your patience as someone for me. I mean, there's so much to go through. I've been given to so many different leads. 
and different things to look through as far as like the evidence. And so I, I appreciate you guys being very, very patient I'll, while doing that, continuing the Son of Sam research. I'm also, again, entering into the Charles Manson research as well, which between Son of Sam and Charles Manson, I did know more about Charles Manson, even though Charles Manson happened in 19, 1969, the summer of love, well before I was born. Um, that is such a fascinating case because unlike David Berkowitz, Charles Manson did not commit any of these crimes. He did not commit the unaliving, but he was, I believe he was mind controlled and then therefore was able to mind control other people. So this is a case of what we call coercive control, which is super fascinating because I'm going to be a little bit, a little bit open about some conversations that I actually just had with the state's attorney not that long ago, who did not believe people could be mind controlled. And I was thinking, holy crap, either you are really uneducated, which I don't think you're uneducated because you're a state's attorney, you're super naive, which again, would you be naive if you were a state's attorney? What Look at all the stuff you've seen. Or you're just really arrogant or ignorant. Because we know in today's age that course of control is a thing. We know that mind control is a thing. And, and I even gave the Charles Manson case in it as an example in my utter shock that this state's attorney did not believe in mind control. In my utter, utter shock. I'm like, hello, have you not been alive for the past four years where we see the media tells people to do something and they run and do it without even checking or doing their own research? That's called mind control. You know, like I was utterly like, felt like I was living in a, parallel universe when i heard him say this i was like i'm not a, an attorney like compared to him and me he has a higher level of education than i do how come i know more than he does about the human mind you know course of control is very 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 real and a very serious problem and so um i i brought up the charles manson case i was like what about charles manson he didn't do any of the crimes he convinced others to do the crimes but yet he had to go to prison because of his involvement in coercion. You still want to, you really want to rethink this like mind control thing? Anyway, so I am having to really, I knew more about, again, Mar about Mar Charles Manson before this because it was so fascinating that he could convince people to, to do these horrific things. And of course, we get into the ritual aspect of it with Sharon, which we're going to talk about when we get into the deep dive. We'll go through all the different conspiracies, everything like that. But just give me a moment with that because it is going to take me some time. I really want to get familiar with the characters involved in this story. Um, especially with Charles Manson. It's different, right? Like Charles Manson and David Berkowitz, they're the same but different. And with Charles Manson, you know, with the victims of David Berkowitz, of the son of Sam, we're looking at people besides the producer and the Studio 54 guy that were unalived later on. As far as like the, 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 these victims, as far as we know, none of them were associated with Hollywood. None of them were associated with like these really power players in the world, right? But with Manson, we're looking at Roma Polanski. We're looking at Rosemary's Baby. We're looking at a lot of really interesting information and spinning wheels going on around the whole situation that i really want to take some time to get very familiar with before i present it in a video for you guys uh, because i really want to do this right and i want to do doug right talking about this because especially when it comes to the ties to scientology i know a lot of the scientologists will say oh no no there's no connection between between charles manson and scientology he only did a little bit of auditing well, if you really understand coercive control to the extent that Doug did in his research, it doesn't take that much. If you know what you're doing, it doesn't take that much. And I actually believe people like Charles Manson and Berkowitz were groomed for this a lot earlier than we know. Like I think in childhood, and I think Manson's going to have way more indicators of being groomed for the role that he played um, in 1969 than, we, than we're aware of. But I'm going to get that. I'm going to get to that when we do our deep dive. But I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of why this might take a little bit longer than previously thought, because I really just want to understand. I really, for myself, I don't want to just cover this story and then move on to the next story. 
You know, I typically, for the last four years, all of the stories that I've covered, there are some stories that stick with me more than others. Um, some of the stories I covered three years ago, like I remember covering them, but if I had to do it again, I'd have to go back and re-research because you just forget things here and there, little details. With this though, this is such a big thing, how it's going to tie into Jack Parsons, how it's going to tie into the rise of the satanic church, how it's going to tie into all these different government programs that happened post world war two. I just want to make sure that I understand as best of my ability before presenting it, before I present it. Now, with that being said, the process church of the final judgment, um, I've had some conversations offline. I do understand that this might be a very scary topic to get into. However, I am willing to go there. I've already dealt with the worst of the worst here on YouTube. I've already gone through anything horrifying that I need to go through. I do feel pretty protected, not just um, spiritually protected, but I do feel pretty protected physically at this moment. I have a pretty good relationship with the police department here in Atlanta and elsewhere because of other things that have gone on. Um, we are protected here in our home. I don't have any children. I don't have any dependents. So I feel like, I am in a good position to talk about this because no one depends on me, right? Like I, if something were to happen to me, it's not going to affect gravely affect anybody to net, maybe my boyfriend, but that, you know, like too negatively. So I feel like I'm made to do this. Um, and so I'm going to go into the uh, process church and what we know about the process church of final judgment and every, all the shenanigans that they've been up to. And of course their ties to potential alleged, maybe circumstantial ties to the British intelligence and how that again connects to Scientology and of course everything that's going on with um you know their splinter groups which uh, apparently they've disbanded but we know they probably haven't disbanded so just give me some time I'm also going through a lot of Joe Rogan's podcast because he also does talk uh talk about this topic I just need to figure out and screen grab some of what he says so we have different voices in this video besides Doug's voice, besides my own, um, hopefully you guys can pitch in in the comment section and we can continue this conversation. But just as of now, know that we're really just kind of in the beginning stages. I'm again, just trying to get my head around all of this. So the scheduling for the next few weeks, weeks might be a little bit weird because of what is going on behind the scenes. We will definitely pick up back up with Peter the Great over in Russia and the Anastasia conspiracy we will finish that, I promise you guys, but I just feel like um, right now there's a reason why all this stuff is falling into my lap at this moment. And so I'm going to strike while the iron is hot. I also, um, in a conversation I had earlier today, I was shook if I tell you shook if, because this also kind of related back to the Necronomicon, which is a book I covered a while ago when I was going through all these old, old grimoires or spell books. I'll link those down in the description box too, in case you missed those. And so I feel like a lot of my old work from a few years ago is resurfacing now again. And there has to be a reason for that, right? Like, I don't believe in coincidence. I think everything has its reason. And I was telling this person who was telling me about the Necronomicon connection that I do believe that God guides these things. So I'm going to put my faith in that. I'm just going to keep moving forward. You know, I, I, um, if, if we were to shut up just because we were scared, then the bad guys would win. Right. What is it? Janice Joplin said, freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. We also have to understand that courage is doing things even when you're scared shitless. And so I'm going to keep moving forward, you know, um, and so the world needs to know or needs to at least understand. I, I don't know if, again, if we'll ever know the full truth, but at least needs to understand that some things are not quite as they seem. All right. There's also a lot going on in current events. Of course, we have the Gypsy Rose Blanchard case that I have covered. I've got some other people that want to talk about that. We've also got the curious case of Natalia Grace, which was a story that is baffling and sickening to my stomach. I just, what has this world come to, my friends? What has this world come to? So I'm damn planning on doing a, a kind of a current event and talk about Natalia Grace as well. Bobby is going to be coming back on to do a deep dive into my father's mother's, my paternal maternal so my father's mother's family from south georgia um some scandalous stuff so she's gonna she's my crazy grave lady friend she's gonna be coming on this week to, to, to kind of spill the beans on some of my families my extended family's deep dark secrets 
And I'm also starting on Gnostic TV. For those who are members of Gnostic TV, um, I'm going to be doing some traditional yoga. So I filmed quarter primary series on Sunday with Cindy, my friend Cindy from Sacred Garden Yoga, Steve, another teacher at Sacred Garden Yoga, and Hitesh, a longtime student of both Sacred Garden Yoga and Ashtanga Yoga Atlanta. I filmed that on Sunday. I just sent the footage into Gnostic. So that class should be available very, very soon. We are going to be working through some of the traditional teachings of Ashtanga on Gnostic. Now, as always, I do encourage people to find an actual teacher in their area, KPJAY, authorized teacher in the area, but I know for some people that is not possible. So I'm trying to make this as user friendly through the internet as possible. Now, the quarter primary series that we'll hopefully be releasing this week is part one of two, because in part one of two, I'm going to actually teach you the quarter primary series. Part two of two is just going to be a recording of me counting the primary series. There's not going to be any visual to look at, nothing like that. It is for you to use after you really learn the quarter primary series so that you can fully be engaged in what we call an active meditation. Eventually, in the next month or so, we will be filming the half primary series. So be on the lookout for that. If you are on uh, Gnostic TV, if you're interested in Gnostic TV in that es esoteric health and wellness series, I'm also taking the template the ancient knowledge in these old practices and not only giving you the old practices, but I'm also taking that knowledge and using it in more modern exercises as well. So I've got some movement classes on there, all that kind of stuff. I even have a class specifically designed for people who are struggling with their weight. So it's more like obese friendly for people who are just now starting to get into movement and need to be careful with their joints. I also have actual practical classes on philosophy so that you can sit down and listen to the ancient scripture when it come when it comes to spirituality because a lot of what we're seeing on the internet these days especially in the like the truther community is fake spirituality right and i'll say it again i know people don't like it when i say it but tough tough this is the truth if you are not exercising i will never come to you for tarot card readings for any type of healing work because exercise is the foundation of spirituality. It's how you clear your values, your energetic pathways. It's how you clear your karma. It's how you understand. You start to understand discernment between your uh, ego and imagination and your soul self. So if you're not doing that, and that's like literally laying the foundation, then there's no way that you're actually channeling something else but your imagination and your ego. And that is what's really, really important. I so, see so many people out there like giving all this money to these fake spiritualists. And I'm like, oh my God, if you only just knew the basis of spirituality, why would you buy a house without a foundation, right? Why are you gonna go to someone who doesn't know the foundation of spirituality? They're just conning you. They're using their imagination, not their channeling. Sorry, we have food being delivered. So my dog is barking right now. So I, if you hear it, that's what that's what's going on. So I have created the Esoteric Health and Wellness Series on Gnostic T TV to help you go through these principles, to help you understand and to break down everything that I've spent 18 years studying so that you yourself have more autonomy, knowledge is power, and knowledge protects, and knowledge is infinite, so that you have more knowledge for yourself, so that you can make better decisions when you're going about your day and your life. And also these tools are, regardless of whether you're asking someone to read divination for you or heal you with Reiki, these tools are also just super important for you in general, for you to understand like what is property, what is nature, what is Purusha, what is the soul, what is the tango between the Shiva and the Shakti, what is not important, what is illusionary or Maya versus what is eternal, and what does the illusionary and the Maya have to do with finding the eternal? These are all important questions for your beginning stages in spirituality. Without understanding the principles behind these questions, you're going to get stuck in a karmic or a samskaric loop of karma. And there's not going to be no ascension. And so I hopefully that these classes will help people. If you have any questions regarding these classes, you can email me at GnosticTVBryce at gmail.com, B-R-I-C-E, GnosticTVBryce. And I will be more than happy to try to help you through this so that you become more empowered yourself and that you can take your sovereignty back. Um, that you are, you are the white hats, my friend. Like I keep saying this, like no one's coming to save you. You have to save yourself. And that's your privilege. It's your privilege to save yourself. You don't want somebody else saving you because if somebody else saves you, they then have power over you. And we're just stuck with a whole nother group of controllers. You are made as a fractal of God. You can do this. You got this. So 
Also on Gnostic TV, I have my Esoteric Explorer series where we do a really, really potent deep dives that I would not be able to do on, on YouTube. So it's great to have that body of work on Gnostic TV is exclusive deep dives. Now I have a lot of people being all mad because I got stuff on Gnostic when hello friends, I have bills to pay too, right? Like I can't martyr myself. I can't go homeless to give people free entertainment, right? Like I have to pay for my education and the pricing for Gnostic is extremely low. It's only $8 a month. That's cheaper than Netflix. It's cheaper than Amazon prime. It's cheaper than Peacock. It's cheaper than Ashala. So, um, and so I, I have to pay bills. Like that's just the bottom line. I have bills to pay. Um, and I have to eat and YouTube doesn't pay. So I cannot continue to put free content content out all the time now with that being said i have said this many 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 times a lot of people are not hearing this i have decided to continue my youtube channel as normal so because i'm doing gnostic does not take anything away from youtube i basically just picked up another job okay so if you have a problem with me picking up another job so that i can actually feed myself and feed my dog and take care of my dog then that's your problem. That's your ego. That's not mine because I very easily could just walk away from YouTube and just do Gnostic. But no, I do understand that people are on a budget. I do like connecting with people on YouTube, even though I don't make any money on YouTube. I do enjoy that. And so there will continue to be, to be deep dives on YouTube as well. There's just going to be exclusive content on Gnostic. If you can't afford Gnostic, that's fine. You still have, I have a whole yoga and shadow work playlist on my youtube channel i've done two free shadow work challenges last year a 30 day and a 60 day all that stuff is still up on my playlist that took me months to organize months to create for you guys and i did it for free so if you're upset that i am now doing gnostic to be able to pay my bills that's a you problem. That's a narcissism problem. That's an entitlement problem because there is a ton of free stuff still on my YouTube channel for those that literally can't afford Gnostic. So I do understand that there are people that can't afford it. And so that is also why I'm keeping everything up on YouTube. So I would love for you guys to consider that. I think sometimes people are under this really weird delusion. And I say delusion, not an illusion, a delusion of how much they think we make. We make nothing on YouTube and we work about 16 hours a day. So without Gnostic, I would not be able to continue giving you free content on YouTube because without something like Gnostic, I wouldn't be able to do YouTube for much longer. So thank God Gnostic came along. I know somebody commented um, how people are now doing the pay, 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 like it's a bad thing. Darling, we have to pay our bills. I don't think you guys understand. How would you like it if somebody came to you and said, you should not be getting, how dare you get paid for your job? You go to work every day, you do your labor. And then what if you had somebody saying, you shouldn't get a paycheck. How dare you get a paycheck for your labor? YouTube is a job. As much as I love this, it's a job. It takes a lot of effort. On top of that, I still teach outside. So I know a lot of you guys, I'm preaching to the choir for most of you, you totally get this. This is common sense. I don't, I, I still don't understand how people don't understand this. It's just common sense. I have bills to pay. YouTube doesn't pay anything. If I don't have Gnostic, I starve. I go homeless. Simple as that. So I got to make some money to be able to pay for the internet, pay for the lights to be able to create these, these, uh, these videos. So again, common sense. It's just common sense. But you know, the thing about it is guys, is there's so much junk conspiracy out there and the truth of the world, as I said many times before, is probably one of the most controlled worlds. Um, I think that the controllers, the powers that be can puppet the truth of the world more than they puppet the mainstream media, more than they puppet the normies. And I think so many people, speaking of mind control and coercion, I think so many people are stuck in the hamster wheel of junk conspiracy that they've literally gone into psychosis and delusion. And so I think what they perceive as reality sometimes isn't reality, right? I think sometimes they see, and I think people are confused with martyrdom. Martyrdom is not a positive to martyr yourself is to go negative. 
not to go positive. You have to take, it's like putting the oxygen mask on yourself first before you're able to put the oxygen mask on your loved ones. All right. So I have to be able to eat. I have to be able to turn the lights on, to put gas in my car and to pay my bills in order to continue to do YouTube. It's as simple as that. And I know a lot of you guys get that. And so I thank you so much for your support. I love my patrons. I thank you guys so much for your support. For me, I feel like I'm back at college again, back in university, because I'm about to undergo a huge, almost like a thesis, right, of, of the summer of 69 and <laughs> the broth at church and all these shenanigans that happened before I was born, but are still feeding into our world today. And they actually have started happening long before the summer of 69 even started happening. So I am just so excited about this, though, you guys. I do feel like God's hand is in this and that more and more things will be exposed and will come to light and hopefully will perceive things in a very, very different way. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a wonderful start to your week. Uh, keep your eyes posted. I am going to start doing my videos, too. One more thing, as premieres, I, I don't typically do this, but I've been in the last couple videos as premieres because I like to be able to have you guys in the chat next door, next to the video. And if I'm able to, I'll be in the chat as well. Sometimes I'm not able to, depending on what's going on. But if I'm able to, I will be in the chat as well. Um, as always, as always, debate is totally welcome on this channel you're totally welcome to have a different opinion from me or from anybody else in the comment section or the chat however abuse will not be tolerated on this channel so if you have a different opinion from somebody that's okay you can debate your opinions but please be respectful please understand that opinions are like assholes everyone's got one and it doesn't define the person you're speaking with so even if somebody doesn't agree Maybe somebody believes David Berkowitz is the only person responsible for the Son of Sam. That's okay. We can have different opinions. But when you start name calling or abusing people in the chat or myself, that's when the line gets drawn. And I will remind you guys that when people resort to name calling and debating, it usually means they have no evidence, nothing to really debate. Okay. You can be friends with people. Shocker. Shocker, guys. You can be friends with people who have different opinions than you. Most of my friends and I don't share opinions on everything. My boyfriend and I don't share opinions on everything. Who cares? I still have friends who are normies. I love them to death. They're good people. Right? So we have to remember that. We, we have to go back to that time where it was okay for people to think differently about some things. Yeah? So just be respectful to each other, agree to disagree, and that's how we learn and grow. When we talk and debate, and we're respectful, and we listen to each other, we, we learn and grow as people. And so I encourage that. But again, the minute name calling starts, the minute there's anything that's not respectful, you'll be blocked, hands down, just blocked. So, all right, you guys, hope you have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you soon.